It's literally just Clarence. That's literally all this show is. It's literally just Clarence pretending to be Teen Titans Go by slapping the Powerpuff Girl designs and like one character trait onto the Wee Bear Bears characters. I could tell that it was Clarence I was watching. I could tell that it was a. I could tell that it was Clarence I was watching by the thin lined art style when it was supposed to be only the girls who were around and everything else was all angles and shit. I could tell it was the bears I was hearing because of all the outdated meme humors that was never all that funny to begin with. And I could most certainly tell it was Johnny Test because it was an assumption that they could sell anything to kids without consequence. Blaming millennials for the negative response? Blaming millennials for pointing out your shortcomings. Well, for your information, my good man, we have every right to point out that the animation is a rush shitload of fuck. We have every right to point out that there's barely any characters in this show besides our three bears. We have every right to point out that the superpowers you came up with exist simply to ride the coattails off the My Little Pony Friendship is Magic toy line. And even that show is in creative dire straits. Why, Hasbro? Why do you torture me so? This is the politics of marketing, puppeteering, storytelling, hastily tacked on cash grabs built to sell toys, merchandise, and all sorts of useless junk we've got no time for in a decrepit economy such as this. And as you can tell by the soulless tweets the runners have wrote declaring their utter contempt for their target audience, this villainy has become less and less subtle the more we walk towards a corporate presidency. These are not in the slightest experienced writers, they're fucking scabs that the suits hire almost immediately out of their internships simply to squeeze a dime. Some of them even came from our old pals at Viacom, and most especially their showrunners. You can imagine the utter disdain I felt when I saw the sponge on their resumes, and even worse when I heard of the dirty deeds they committed behind the scenes. Whilst coming the IMD page to find any semblance of hope within the writing staff, I found Emily Brundridge, who had come from Disney's Star vs. The Forces of Evil. And what they did to her in the first half of the first season is just inexcusable. See, what the producers of this show did was declare that her inaugural episode, Home Sweet Horn, addresses transgender issues when it had absolutely no context of the sort, specifically so that they can throw her to the social Just Us shit show in order to see them tear her limb from limb. You cowards do realize that when you lie about the hard work of your colleagues, that pretty much gives her grounds to sue, right? Because this goes beyond making episodes out of nothing but memes and pauses and small talk. All the things you do when you're wasting time and calling it a character development driven show. This is borderline harassment. If you're not going to take responsibility for this cheap excuse of an 11 minute toy commercial and instead denounce the people who clearly know better than you and belittle the crew members who actually give a damn, then why the hell are you still in the animation business? I mean, for God's sake, it's 20 freaking 16. We have the means to point out and nuke the slop these monkeys are trying to feed us. What makes them think that putting down a familiar derby hat would actually make the shitty show worth watching? I honestly feel bad for series creator Craig McCracken. His latest show on the Disney Channel got shit canned as arrogant pretentious jockstraps like these chunderheads abused the very creation that put him on the map. As a matter of fact, a crossover with Teen Titans Go pictured here makes absolutely perfect sense. 
Both of them are spiteful little shell shows designed to sell toys to snot-nosed brats that only find joy on their smartphones. Both are creatively bankrupt hodgepodges of padding and memes disguised as something from our childhood. And both are run by stereotypical high school bullies who take pride in giving us wedgies and stealing 40 cakes. Need I point out that it's as many as four tens? Or have you realized yourselves that those creators are soulless bullies? Because either way, the show they've made is fucking terrible. It is the worst reboot I have ever seen. At least Sonic Boom showed promise when Bill Friedberger wasn't making a sitcom out of it. And at least it didn't follow the exact same path as Teen Titans. Oh, who am I trying to fool? It is Teen Titans Go! Right down to the superhero slacking off on duty! It has left a bitter taste of regret towards Tails' crush and its placement in the rankings had sadly suffered because of that. So, of course, the very nature of this show would be, to me, actually worse than the Adam Sandler comedy, because at least two straight hours of the projectile-shitting donkey and the man who can play piano with his dick is relatively shorter. The fact that this was able to top Adam Sandler's juvenile humor in terms of shittiness automatically scores this puppy the 2016 Charles Koch Award. A reminder designed specifically for only the worst of the worst, and those too disgusting to avoid. If you guys want my advice, both shows should just take their inexperienced writers, incompetent animators, and inconsiderate hacks of producers, and just fuck off. <sighs> I need something good to review. Maybe the Suzuki septuplets will help. I like Comic Con! Flash.